be not afraid of them that kill the body, and afterward have no more they can do. But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him which after he killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two fatherings, and not one of them is forgotten before God? But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. In the sight of God, his creation, you are quite valuable. And it's important for us to learn a very important truth, and that is to trust in God. When we, the Bible says to fear not, to fear not man, what it's saying is don't allow them to determine how you live your life. Don't base your life based upon your fears. I'll tell you whom to fear or whom to trust. Trust in God. Allow Him to be first in your life. If you read later on, the Bible goes on in Luke chapter 12 and verses 22 and following. It gives another parable. But at the end of that parable, it says the following. It says, sell that ye have and give alms. Provide for yourselves bags which wax not old. A treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. In the scriptures, God teaches us what matters most is God. And above all else, besides the, the wealth of this world and your health, what you're the value most is God. And you're not to get caught up in being covetous. Those who have accepted Christ as their, their Savior, although they have life and love more abundantly, sometimes we begin to value wealth and our health more than we value the God who gave it to us. The Bible says we're not to trust in such things. Wherever we are in God, we should be content. The rich fool, in this passage of Scripture, thought that he could take his ease because of accumulated wealth. He had attained a status in life where life was easy. And he said to himself, you know what? I, I got it pretty easy now. I've saved up a lot of money. I'm going to relax. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my life. And then the the Bible says that God took him. As we look at this passage of Scripture, this passage of Scripture shows us a person who is rich, but he was not rich towards God. In order to be truly rich, one must be rich towards God. In order to be truly rich, one must be rich towards God. In order for this to happen, one first must recognize their standing before God, then recognize that God is the giver of all things good, and then use what God has given them for the service of God. Let us first look at this evening. Recognize your standing before God. In this passage of Scripture, we read about the rich young, or excuse me, we read about the, the person who's rich, but he's not rich towards God. Without Christ, you can never be rich towards God. I want you to understand, if you're watching this evening, and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you'll never be rich. You'll never be rich. This world, and what it offers you, the wealth, the things you see around you, your car, your house, you're not going to take it with you when you die. The Bible says we brought nothing into this world, and we can be sure that we'll bring nothing out of it. And above all else in this life, what matters most is whether or not you're rich towards God. And that is only possible if you know God. One should never think gain is godliness or that it profits you. Don't ever think, or don't let this religious value or the, this false religion where people think if I'm being blessed financially and I'm wealthy, then I'm spiritually healthy. That does not determine your standing before God. It's whether or not you've at some point in your life seen yourself as a sinner. You saw that the the truth that the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, he was buried and rose again so that you could ever have everlasting life, and you've placed your trust in him for the forgiveness of sins. That is where true riches begins. It begins by placing your trust in the Savior. Repentance towards God and the gift of salvation is far more important than the wealth of this world. 
we look around the things around us, the Bible says eventually all of it will disappear. All of it will come to naught. The Bible says the following in Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Turn there if you would. Luke chapter 9, and verse 23. It says, And he said unto them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whosoever shall, will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a, is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself, or be cast away? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory, and in his fathers, and of the holy angels. But I tell you of a truth, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. There is a question asked in this passage of Scripture. The Bible says, what shall a profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? How valuable is your soul to you? What value do you put on it? When God looks at your soul, he says it's more valuable than the wealth of this world. What will it profit you if you gain the whole world and lose your own soul? If you're watching this evening and you don't know Christ as your Savior, it's not going to profit you anything to have all the wealth that this world has to offer and yet know, not, know, not know Jesus. What you need more than wealth and health is the redemption only Christ provides. When death came, the rich fool had nothing because he was not rich towards God. Just because he accumulated a lot of wealth in this world does not make him rich in God's sight. Riches, or rather the love of them, can cause one to lose focus on what truly matters. A lot of people in this world, they live a certain lifestyle and they, they don't have God as part of their life because they trust in uncertain riches. They value materials more than they value the God that gave them the materials. They look at life and they value everything, even the Bible says that it comes to a point in time where they worship the creature more than the creator. People always value something more than God and forget everything that they see around them and everything that they have is a gift of God. The Bible says the following, Matthew 19, 16 and following, and behold, one came and said unto him, good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He saith unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from a youth up. What lack I yet? And Jesus said unto him, Thou wilt be perfect. Go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again, I say unto you, it is easier for the camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter in the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were exceeding amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. With God all things are possible. It doesn't matter where a person is at, or where they seem to be but anyone and everyone can be saved. Even the rich men who trust in the riches, if they learn to turn away from that and turn to God, they learn to turn away from the things of this world and trust in God, they can be saved. The disciples, when they heard Jesus speak this message, they said, well, who can be saved? And he said, well, with God, nothing's impossible. With God, nothing is possible. We have to remember as Christians this truth as well. We look around us and we live in a society where there's a lot of wealthy people. We're a wealthy nation compared to those nations around us. You say, I don't feel very wealthy. Well, there's others that don't have it as good as we do, but I want you to understand this. We live in a society where 
the, the God of our society is their wealth. It is their materials. They trust in uncertain riches. And I want to remind you that they too can be saved. It's not impossible with God. God can save anyone. Jesus said that hardly a rich man would be saved. This is because they make riches their God. What matters most to them in life is not a restored relationship with God, but instead it is their wealth. One can never be rich towards God unless he first humbles himself and receives the free gift of salvation. The, one of the truths we receive from this passage of Scripture, if you're watching this evening, is simply the truth is this, and that is riches will not go with you when you die. When death comes, what will matter is your relationship with God. What will matter is what you've done with God. Which brings me to my next point this evening. Recognize the giver of blessings. Recognize the giver of blessings. I've been mainly focusing on the loss and their responsibility to recognize God, but I want uh, Christians to realize this truth too, that just like that lost person valued his wealth above God, Christians do the same quite a bit of times in their life. They begin to look at their wealth and health as being a priority. There's nothing wrong with having material things. There's nothing wrong with having things. The Bible says that he's given us all things freely to be enjoyed. We have to recognize who it is that has given us the things that we've had. Recognize the giver of blessings. The Bible says in James 1.16 and following, turn there if you would, the book of James, chapter 1 and verses 16 and following. The Bible says in James chapter 1, verse 16 and following, Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be kind of first fruits of his creatures. Even our gift of salvation came from above. It was given to us by God the Father. We know the story. We know of Christmas, the child coming, his birth, of our, the birth of our Savior. It came from above. God sent his Son into this world so that we might have everlasting life. But the gifts don't stop there. After you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, he continues to give. He gives us life and life more abundantly. And we need to learn as Christians not to trust in the things that God has given us. We have to remember they were given to us from God. They're not in control of our life. They're not what uh, prospers us. What makes us prosper is whether or not we're rich towards God. And one of the ways we're going to become rich towards God or lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven is by recognizing that God is the giver of all gifts. By every other gift that you have, comes from him as well. Thinking of all the gifts that you have, what do you have right now? Do you have a host? Do you have a car? Do you have uh, health? Those are things God has given to you. By every, and the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, 44 and following, it says, By saying to you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh the sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and setteth rain on the just and on the unjust. This passage of Scripture, we learn a simple truth. The gifts, the good things that we have, the rain, the snow. Sometimes we look outside and say, I wish it wasn't raining. It is a gift of God. God has blessed us with it. It is what is needed. God gives us what we need. God provides for us. And we must never forget that God is our provider. Riches, wealth, they don't provide for you. They don't take care of you. God gives it so that you have your needs taken care of. And whether or not they're around will not matter. I'm, I'm here to say if all the money in this world were to perish, all the silver and the gold, God would still take care of you. I'm here to let you know that no matter what is happening in society, whether it be inflation, whether it be 
uh, the, the end of the world as we know it. We need to know this as Christians, God will still take care of you. Our, our dependence is upon God. We're rich when we recognize who it is that God is. And we need to recognize that God is the giver of all things good. Money is not what gives you your good things. Your house is not what gives you good things. God is the one who gives you good things. God is the one who provides. Money can be both good and bad depending on how it is acquired and how it is used. It, we look at wealth. I'm not here to tell you that money's bad, health is bad, houses are bad. I want you to understand simply this, that how you use it determines whether or not they are good or bad. It's whether or not you take of what God has given to you and say, either say, thank you, God, for giving me these things, or are you of that person, that heart attitude, you always want more. You begin to covet. You're never satisfied. God says we're not to look upon our wealth. We're to look upon the God who provides. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 6, 2 and following, And they that have leaving masters, let them not despise them, because they are brethren, but rather do them service, because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to the wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From, from such withdraw thyself. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. But they that will be rich shall fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Your very life in all aspects is the gift of God. And God warns us, not to get caught up in covetousness, because when you begin to determine your life is based upon how much wealth you have, when you begin to determine your life is based upon how much you can get, the Bible says you'll pierce yourself through with many hurtful sorrows. There'll be many pains you'll go through. Because at the end of it all, when you go through death's door, even for the Christian, when you go through death's door, you're going to wish that you'd given him more. We sing that song, but the truth is sometimes it's so quick and so easy to forget. We begin to live our lives based upon how much more we can attain from this world when we should live our lives to, to glorify God by giving what we have to Him. Don't determine your standing before God by how much you have. It is determined whether or not you know God and what you have you use for God, which brings me to my final point. I'll be done this evening Use what God has given you to serve Him. Use what God has given you to serve Him. Turn your Bibles to the book of 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 6, and we'll begin reading in verse 17. 1 Timothy chapter 6, and verse number 17. Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, lay up and store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold of eternal life. In this passage of Scripture, we learn a very important lesson. The Bible says, "...to charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches." Don't ever trust in the wealth. Trust in the God who gives us all things freely to enjoy. Never place your confidence in the wealth that God has given you, but rather place your trust in the God who gave it. In this passage of Scripture, God tells those who He has given riches to to be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. If God has blessed you with a lot of money, if God has given you wealth, 
The Bible says what you ought to be doing with that wealth is be willing to communicate. What's that mean? Willing to help those who are in need. Use it as God tells you to use it. Take what God has given you and give it to Him. And He'll tell you what to do with it. Ready to distribute to the necessity of the saints. Willing to give to those that are abroad preaching the gospel. Giving the missions. Giving to that brother and sister who is in need. That is lacking. That's what God wants us to do. He doesn't want us to look at riches and say, give me, give me more. He wants us to look at riches and say, I want to use this for you, Lord. And he says, the way we use it for him is by giving to others. God has blessed you to be a blessing to others. More specifically, other believers. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, 8 and following, For he that soweth to his flesh shall the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall the Spirit reap life everlasting. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. The Bible says in the early church, they had all things common. They understood the needs of others were important than their own needs. Excuse me, more important than their own niceties, I should say. God always supplies for our needs, and when we have more than what we need, we should use that to give to the needs of others. That's what God teaches us in His Word. The Bible says in the book of Acts, chapter 4, 32 and following, And the multitude of them believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands or of hosts sold them, and brought the prices of the things that were sold, laid them down at the apostles' feet, and the distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. Others' necessities are more important than your niceties. Someone who is rich and sees his brother has a need, if God has blessed you, And you see that your brother has a need. If you want to be rich towards God, you want to be like God in this world. That's what it means to be rich towards God. It's just taking what God has given you and use it as he sees fit. Then we need to live like God would. And how would he do that? Well, the Bible says in the James chapter 2, 14 and following, What does it profit, my brethren? Though a man say he hath faith and not works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled. Notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body. What doth it profit? Genuine faith looks at the need of others and tries to fulfill that need. Genuine service towards God looks at things and materials around us as instruments to serve God. They don't, genuine faith in God and trust in God, being rich towards God is simply understanding that God is the giver of all things. God supplied my need. And if I have more than what I need, God gave that to me so that I can be a blessing to others and supply their need. If we want to be rich towards God, we need to not to learn to trust in uncertain riches. We need to learn to trust in the God who gives us all things. I'll give an example of this, and we've all, well, I shouldn't say we've all experienced, but I have experienced when I was younger, when I was at Bible college. I can remember a time when, obviously, when you're poor, you're going to Bible college, so that's what we always say. You go into Bible college, you don't have much money, you're working, you're barely getting by. And I remember the time when um, my grandmother had passed away, and so uh, I had to go home, which I had to pay a plane ticket. It was about $300. I didn't have the $300, so I spent it anyway. And I remember afterwards coming back, someone walking up to me and says, you know what, the Lord laid upon my heart to give this to you. And someone gives me an envelope, and in it, it's the same price as the plane ticket, $300. And what I'm trying to say is those simple little things, that God lays upon your heart to be a blessing to others. Don't ever take it for granted. When God has blessed you with that extra $20, and you say to yourself, what am I going to do with this $20? Well, you can lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. 
How do I do that? You look at it and see it as just a, an instrument. It's just a piece of money. It's not worth anything. You use it to be a blessing to someone else. Someone you know who has a need. You walk up to them, shake their hand, and leave them with the $20. I remember experiencing that lots of times when I lacked in certain needs in my life. And my wife can give a testimony as well. I'm sure she doesn't mind me telling um, when she went to Bible college, she probably wasn't as well off as even I was, but there was a time where she didn't even have enough money to buy some toothpaste. She didn't have toothpaste. And then all of a sudden, there was just something that occurred somewhere along the line where the, the preacher said, first one to raise their hand will get a reward. She raised her hand, she got $5. She used it to buy the toothpaste. What I'm saying is this. God knows the needs of others. And God wants you to look at the needs of others. And he wants you to treat the finances and the things that you have in the right way. He wants you to look at them as just being things to be used for the glory of God. Don't be like that rich man and don't be like that person who says, Lord, can you speak to my brother? He isn't giving me my money. Look at the things in this world as God intends you to look at them. And then you'll be rich towards God. One must realize life is not about making a lot of money and doing a lot of things that we enjoy, but our life is about knowing God and serving Him by serving our brothers and sisters in Christ. This is true joy because it is Christ-centered. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Why is it more blessed to give than to receive? Because when you give, God puts that treasure up in heaven. You give a cup of cold water in His name, God gives to you a reward. When you're doing things for God, He sees and He takes notice of it. The Bible says, Mark 9, 38 and following, John answered and said, saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followeth not us, and we forbade him, because he followeth not us. But Jesus said, Forbid him not, for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me, for he that is not against us is on our part. For whosoever shall give a cup of water to drink in my name, because ye belong to Christ, verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. True riches is found in doing things for God. True riches is not found in riches. True riches is found in serving God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, again, Lord, we thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. And I pray that you help each and every one of us, the Lord, to learn this lesson, to be aware of covetousness, not to look on things as if they matter, but learn to look to you. God, you're the one who truly matters in our life. And what you have given us in your word and how we are to live our lives is what we need to learn to do. Where our treasure is, there will our heart be also. Lord, our hearts need to be where your heart is, and I pray you'd help each and every one of us to understand that truth. Work in each and every one of our lives. We need the help that only you can give. We need the grace of God. Again, Lord, I pray, again, if there is someone who's watching, they don't know Jesus, they They've been always focusing on the things of this world, but they've never considered where they'll spend eternity. I pray that tonight their eyes be opened and they'll trust in you for the forgiveness of sins. Again, Lord, I just pray in everything you be glorified, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor. Wonderful principle. And so many people in our world today that uh, over the, the years that served the Lord and uh, God blessed them with riches. Uh, Cadbury, the creator of the chocolate bar, he knew the Lord and um, he, uh, he, you know, didn't allow riches to become as God served, didn't serve money, served the Lord and used uh, the wealth that God gave him uh, to spread the gospel. Heinz Ketchup, uh, born again believer and used of God to, to do great things. J.C. Penney uh, told the Lord that if God blessed him, uh, he, would, he would keep 10% and he